Hello everyone, this is Iggy. Welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. Today I'm going to be talking about the 40th anniversary G.I. Joe Foot Locker set. Now this particular item was released in 2003 and was an exclusive to Target. Now Hasbro released some other exclusives in the 40th anniversary line, such as set number 9, which was the uh, Marine Medic, and was exclusive to Walmart. And J.C. Penney had the Mountain Patrol, uh, which was set number 30. And then the G.I. Joe Collectors Club had, I believe, set number 23, which was an action, 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 what's action? Action, an a it was an accent. Yavol, I have accent too. Uh, anyway, it was an action soldier set, and uh, is actually one of my favorites. But I don't own a a um, I don't own one of them yet. Yet, notice I said yet. Okay, so here's the 40th anniversary GI Joe set. This is one of my ultimate favorites, and the reason being is because you get super cool uh, Foot Locker with the soldier. The uh, coffin box, which you see here, and it looks like it's a little dark. Let me see if I can get in a closer uh, view here for you. And maybe turn my light around. It reflects a little bit off of the uh, plastic, but at least you can... No, it looks like he has a gigantic UFO... Well, there he is. He's looking through the window. Anyway, it comes with a whole bunch of equipment. So in that regard, it's a more exciting set than some of the others because it comes with the uh, uh, um, the Garand and the M1 carbine. It comes with a helmet. Now, uh, the helmet would go right here, but when they packaged it, they put the helmet inside this section here and it's up here in the corner so you may not see it here in the the uh, picture uh the foot locker was released in 1965 by hasbro and if you want to know more about the hasbro corp there's a lot of stuff written about hasbro and you can get a, a really good history of gi joe such as this one right here it's fully illustrated uh, there was interviews with a lot of the people who were part of the design team and development team. So this is a handy book to have. There's others, but I, I like this one the best uh, because of the uh, uh, material. The uh, God, I've been doing too many videos today. Uh, the what am I trying to say, guys? The uh, illustrations. There you go. I knew my brain would uh, fire sooner or later. So uh, you might want to check this out. This came with the Masterpiece Collection. And uh, that came with a boxed uh, Joe and, of course, um, this book. Which had a different cover, by the way, depending on which Joe you bought. For instance, if you bought the astronaut, uh, this would have a picture of him in his... Uh, astronaut gear and helmet and so forth with the air force and navy and marines so that's pretty cool you can also get um a, a video uh with interviews of all the various key people in the v development of gi joe and i it's a pretty cool thing to have too so um let's take a look at the Sears catalog for 1965. Okay, let's move these books out of the way. Let's get the catalog over here. This is an abridged version of a, a uh, Sears catalog from 1965. And there's the, the uh, Foot Locker. And in those days, it was only $2.99. Now, this thing is made of actually made of wood. And uh, the repro, the repro, the 40th anniversary GI Joe locker is extremely similar 
a faithful reproduction except for one item. Uh, the original had a hinge in the back here and over here, whereas the 40th anniversary Foot Locker has a hinge that goes all, a brass hinge that goes all the way across the locker. Now, when you were a kid, you would look at this here and go, oh God, if I only had that, I would fill this tray up. That'd be so awesome. I want that so bad. Well, you didn't have to do that with this because it comes fully locked and loaded. This is an awesome set. I can't say enough good things about the 40th anniversary G.I. Joe line. I just absolutely love it. Uh, I would go into stores uh, like KB Toys, uh, Target, Walmart, Toys R Us, um, and I would just spend hours looking at these things. I loved them so much. In fact, uh, one time at, uh, I believe I was at Toys R Us, a woman went to management and said there's a creepy old guy uh, hanging around the G.I. Joe area and all, like three employees and a store manager came over and interviewed me and asked me what I was doing there. I guess the woman uh, didn't think it was possible that a man would want to still collect these things but she was a bit no, never mind never mind what she was she knows what she was karen so there's the uh the 1965 foot locker millions of these were sold you still can buy them on ebay because there are so many of them produced that it's not what you would consider a rare item to have i still have my original gi joe Foot Locker, and uh, I have a homemade G.I. Joe Foot Locker, and I have three of these, plus I think I have one 30th anniversary G.I. Joe Foot Locker. By the way, if you're comparing the 30th anniversary with this one, uh, there's no comparison. It's It's not a faithful reproduction of the original, the 30th that is. Uh, it was also a Target exclusive, and uh, it was not packaged very well. Um, the packaging was unappealing, uh, whereas this, on the other hand, is, is very attractive, um, eye-catching, as, as a matter of fact. And uh, the 30th, uh, the, the locker had a lot of problems, and also the gear was not as good as the 40th. Like the... Um, the elastic sling on the rifle, I think, was plastic. I'm not. I can't remember. I remember selling. Uh, I had a, three of them. I think I sold two of them because I just didn't care for it that much. Uh, they did. Re, uh, Hasbro did come out uh, prior to the rebirth of GI Joe. They came out with a plastic foot locker, which I sold in a garage sale because I think I thought it was a piece of crap. There's no comparison to the wood one. The wood one, whoa, the um, the wood one is uh, a much superior product. Anyway, that's the 40th GI Joe Foot Locker. If you don't have it, I highly recommend that you get it and add it to your collection. Now, there's uh, one more thing I wanted to mention before I, I go on. Um, I bought I bought this carry case by ideal uh and it came in the mail yesterday actually it came in the mail the same time this one did and but when i opened up the ideal case uh it had this in it which is a hong kong knockoff of uh, a gi joe carbine you can see it's pretty cheap plastic strap is broken paint's chipped off and uh, a hand grenade. You can tell this is uh, either something from Stony, uh, Louis Marx's Stony, or perhaps a Hong Kong knockoff. And then this came, and I was wondering if you guys know what this is from. I recognized this instantly when I saw it. Um, I'll let you look at that for a second, and you let me know if you recognize what that's from. And I'll try and find it here in the uh, in the catalog. 
I should have done this first. I don't know why I uh, I do this. But um, when I make these videos, I just sit down and start recording. And uh, sometimes I'll do the recording like two or three times because I'll screw up so badly that uh, I have to just do it over again. But most of the time I just go start talking as if you're sitting, um, you know, across from me in my garage in Canoga Park, California, back in 1964. Look at this. This is 1964 Sears catalog. Now, I don't know if this is how it was introduced. I would think this would have been introduced in color. But you can see it had a double-page spread, which is pretty good for a toy. A lot of retailers would have loved to have a spread in the Sears catalog. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, especially younger people. But... Uh, Sears used to be the powerhouse. Look at this, guys. Wow, I love this. I actually had this set when I was a kid. Got it for Christmas in 1961. I never had the uh, Ford Apache, but I've gotten... Uh, I think I have like five of them now or six. I'm not sure. Not a lot of them. Oh, I don't see it now. So I should just tell you what it is. Well, here's all the guns. They had a lot of guns back in those days. And you can see they, they looked like real guns. Oh, is that it? No, that's the one with the net. That's with the net. I feel like I'm close to it. All right, well, I'm not going to waste your time with it. Anyway, this piece here is from a Jungle Patrol helmet. So the helmet looked like this, but it had this kind of camouflage all over the helmet. And I thought it was weird that I recognized it so quickly. Anyway, that's all I've got for you on, on this today. Uh, the 40th anniversary G.I. Joe Target exclusive. It was an unnumbered set. As you can see here, it doesn't have a number like the other ones do. Uh, the J.C. Penney and Walmart exclusives were numbered, unlike this one here. So there's the the Foot Locker, and uh, like I said, if you don't own this one, I highly recommend that you get it. You can it's available on eBay still. Uh, this particular one I got for one hundred and twelve dollars. Uh, most of them run for 125 so don't pay those $200 price tags that some of the eBay people are asking for. Let me see if I can take this light off so it's not reflecting off the plastic. Get in close. Give you an idea of the equipment. Uh, it comes with a cartridge belt, bayonet, uh, carbine, garand, e-tool, uh, canteen and cover. Uh, there's also a flare pistol, uh, a pair of binoculars, a um, first aid kit. Oh, you know what? The um, I wanted to say something about the mess kit. When I was in the Army, they issued me a mess kit. I never used it once. Not even, I don't know anyone who ever used it. Uh, they would issue us our C rations. Actually, I don't think they were called C rations. MRE. Uh, they were left over from the Vietnam War. Literally, left over from the Vietnam War. And so we were eating stuff that was probably 10 years old. 15 years old, maybe. Let's show you the back of the box. Because I didn't do that earlier. This gives you a better view of what the foot locker looks like. There it is there in all its glory. And then here it shows the foot locker when it's open. 
And there's the mess kit I was talking about right there. Can you see that? That's the mess kit. Uh, oddly enough, they, uh, Hasbro had a chance to fix this, but they, they didn't. On, um, you know, the, uh, illustration that shows what the, goes in the tray, they always had this green radio. And all the radios that they made were brown. So they could have made this a little more appealing or collectible by making a green radio to go in here. But they sort of dropped the ball on that. Anyway, uh, I was talking to you about the mess kit. We would get our rations and we would open. I, I like the, I called it beanie weenie, but I'm not sure if it had uh, weenies in it. Guys, you don't, never mind. I was going to say you don't want weenies in your food, but anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, we would uh, take a shovel and we would shove it under the muffler on the tank and we would put the uh, open can on top of the shovel and the exhaust, heat from the exhaust would uh, cook our food. Now, I'm not sure if that was healthy to do that, but that's how all the tankers would cook their their rations. And uh, that's it for the G.I. Joe 40th Anniversary Foot Locker. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this, and I hope you actually get a chance to add one to your collection if you haven't already done so. Uh, that's it for me, Iggy. This is uh, video number 36. I'm sort of rushing through them today because I have to go back to work tomorrow. So thanks for coming along, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to... Uh, press subscribe and uh, hit that uh, like button. All right, you guys, let's turn it around one more time. I hope I'm not being too tedious today. There you go. And there's our 40th anniversary G.I. Joe Foot Locker. All right, you guys, thank you very much for visiting me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.